So in this video we'll be talking about nucleic acids. We'll talk about the little components that make up nucleic acids and we'll also talk about the structure of nucleic acids and hopefully you'll be able to break everything down and make it really simple for you to understand and uh, you'll be able to find the timestamps to all of this in the description below and you can skip to wherever you feel is most necessary and it will be worthwhile watching the next video because I've included a mind map which utilizes this video too. So nucleic acids are structures that store information and in terms of living beings that's mostly proteins. So nucleic acids carry information for the proteins and the information can be passed on to daughter cells. So for example every time the cell, a cell divides it passes the genetic information and the information is actually passed on in the form of nucleic acids and the proteins do not carry the genetic information and we have to remember that the information is actually passed on by nucleic acids. And nucleic acids are polynucleotides and we know that the origin of the word poly is from ancient Greek which literally means many. And using this information we can say that nucleic acids consist of many nucleotides hence it makes sense to say that the building blocks of nucleic acids are nucleotides. So this is how they actually look and it's actually relatively simple to understand the building blocks of them. So all of them have a sugar and the sugar is either ribose or 2 deoxyribose and the difference is in the 2 prime and carbon and this residue either has a hydroxyl group or just a hydrogen so what do you think we would have if we just had a hydrogen on that 2 prime, prime and carbon DNA or RNA so if we have just a hydrogen we don't have the oxygen and this is the deoxy form so it's going to be DNA whereas RNA would have the hydroxyl group on the 2 prime and carbon so every nucleotide has the sugar base is either ribose or 2 deoxyribose. It also has a nitrogen base, so chemically speaking, it's just a chemical molecule, and this really makes a difference in terms of coding for the information. And we can have five different types of these, and they can be so categorized into pyrimidines and purines. I'll look at, we'll look at them in the next few slides. So the nucleotides also have phosphate groups, they can either have one, two, or three phosphate groups. How many phosphate groups do you think adenosine triphosphate ATP would have? Well, the answer is three because adenosine triphosphate, the word tri literally means three. Hence, it makes sense to say adenosine triphosphate has three phosphate groups. So, this is it for the structure of nucleotides. It's actually quite simple to understand once you can get your head around it. So, the pyrimidine bases are basically heterocyclic organic rings and there are three examples of these one is cytosine one is uracil and the third one is thymine and they're usually abbreviated as cu and a t the ring is the same and the difference is slightly in the structure for example we have an uh, amino group in cytosine and a ch3 group on the thymine slightly different structure but the base structure is pyrimidine we also have purine nucleobases and they look a bit more complicated they consist of a pyrimidine ring that's fused to something called an imidazole ring basically a double cyclic molecule and in this case we have two different ones one is adenine A and the other one is guanine or G they have slightly different structures but the basic chemical structure is the same so just to recap and summarize everything nucleic acids are polynucleotides and the building blocks are nu nucleotides and again it is a base which determines part of the name and we can have two types of these purines or pyrimidines the sugar can either be ribose or 2-deoxyribose the ribose would code into RNA and 2-deoxyribose would code in for DNA and finally we can have 1, 2 or 3 phosphate groups and that brings us to the end of this video and thanks for watching for watching